have number 10 coming up and that is YouTube. This one is really, really surprising. Yeah, you're watching this video right now on YouTube, largely due to the efforts of Jawed Karim. And he's of Bangladeshi and German descent, and he's a software engineer and internet entrepreneur who is also the co-founder of YouTube. Now, he uploaded the first video on YouTube and it's titled Me at the Zoo and it's actually still up to this day. YouTube was launched on February 14th of 2005 and in October of 2006, YouTube was bought by Google for $1.6 billion. Number nine is the Willis Tower. This was a joint invention, so to speak. Bangladeshi American structural engineer Fazlur Rahman Khan and Colombian Peruvian architect Bruce Graham, they designed the Willis Tower, which was formerly known as the Sears Tower. Now, it's 108 story or 1,450 feet, which works out to be 442 meters tall skyscraper, and it's located in Chicago, United States. At the time of completion in the year 1974, it became the tallest building in the entire world. It was also the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere for about 41 years. And this is until the new One World Trade Center surpassed it in the year 2013. Number eight brings us the tube, not YouTube, but the tube. So let me explain. That's a structural engineering term. And the tube system really is a concept that's based on the idea that a building can be designed to resist lateral loads by designing it as a hollow cantilever at an angle of 90 degrees to the ground. This system was first introduced by Fassler Raman Khan of course, he's the same Bangladeshi American structural engineer who designed the Willis Tower, which we just talked about. Number seven brings us microfinancing. The modern use of the expression microfinancing goes back to the 1970s, which was founded by microfinance pioneer Muhammad Yunus. He was starting to form the modern industry of microfinancing. Now, this approach of microfinancing was institutionalized by Eunice in the year 1976 with the foundation of the Grameen Bank in Bangladesh. Microfinancing is a financial service and assistance to people and companies who lack access to typical banking and related services. Sono arsenic filter is the discovery and invention that comes in at number six. A sono arsenic filter is a two bucket system developed to reduce chemical compounds by passing the water through coarse sand composite iron matrix known as CIM, brick chips, and wood charcoal. Abdul Hassam, who was born in Bangladesh, is the inventor of the Sono arsenic filter. There you go, guys. Now, halfway into number five, we have the Sonali bag, also known as the golden bag. This is a cellulose-based biodegradable bioplastic alternative to plastic bags and it was developed by Bangladeshi Mubarak Ahmad Khan. Polythene bags were banned in Bangladesh in 2002 because of the environmental concern. Now Mubarak Ahmad Khan who was a scientist at the Bangladesh Atomic Energy Commission in collaboration with other researchers from Bangladesh developed a range of material and the Sonali bag came from that. Moving on to number four, we have the Cresco graph. This is a term that I never heard of before, but a Cresco graph is a device for measuring the growth in plants. It was invented in the early 20th century by Jagadith Chandra Bose. And he was a biologist, a physicist, a botanist, and a writer, and was originally born in Bikrampur, Bengal Presidency, British India, now known as Munshinganj, Bangladesh. And his Cresco graph uses clockwork gears and a smoke glass plate to record the movement of the tip of a plant or its roots. It can record plant growth, magnifying a small movement as much as 10 million times. The horn antenna comes in at number three. Now a horn antenna or microwave horn is an antenna that consists of a flaring metal waveguide shaped like a horn to direct radio waves into a beam. Now one of the first horn antennas was constructed in the year 1897 by Bengali Indian radio researcher Jagdeep Chandra Bose, hear that name again, in his pioneering experiments with microwaves. This guy literally revolutionized the world. An advantage of the horn antenna is that since they have no resonant elements, they can operate over a wide range of frequencies and wide bandwidth. Now, number two brings us the focus impedance measurement. 
Focus impedance measurements known as FIM is a recent technique for quantifying the electrical resistance in tissues of the human body with improved zone localization compared to conventional methods. This method was proposed and developed by the Department of Biochemical Physics and Technology of the University of Dhaka, Bangladesh under the supervision of Professor Konkar Siddiq E. Rabani who was the one who first introduced this idea. Now, this thing can be really useful for impedance measurements of large organs like the stomach, the heart, the lungs, and it can also be used in other fields that perform impedance measurements. Now, ending off this list, we have number one, and here we look at crystal radio. A crystal radio receiver, also called crystal set, is a simple radio receiver, and it's very popular in the early days of radio. It uses only the power of their received signal to produce sound, needing no external power at all. Crystal radios are the simplest type of radio receiver and can be made with a few inexpensive parts. Crystals were first used as a detector of radio waves in the year 1894 by Jagadith Chandra Bose. There's that name again, guys. Although radio has developed far beyond the early days, this man contributed to having radio sets accessible and affordable to a lot more people. Starting at number 10, we have the longest single line of bikes. Riding a bicycle is a favorite pastime for many Bangladeshis. Bicycles can be used for recreation as well as for traveling. And just as a testament of Bangladesh's passion for bikes. There was a world record that was set for the longest single line of moving bikes back in the year 2016. There's a total of 1,186 cyclists that took part in this record-breaking event and it was organized by a non-profit organization called BD Cyclists. Bangladeshi cyclists rode for 3.2 kilometers in the Purbachal area to break this record. Moving on to world record number nine, the largest cleanup campaign. So to raise awareness among people that cleanliness isn't just limited to personal life, Dhaka South City Corporation, or DSCC for short, organized the Dhaka cleanup campaign one year. Now, this event attracted more than 20,000 people. And because of that, it created a whole new world record. Celebrities, police officers, and people from all different backgrounds, they all came out to take part in this event. Although the goal of the event wasn't necessarily to break any world record, but when people started to find out that, oh, this could actually break world record, people out of nowhere just started to join in in order that the record could be set. And previously, the record for the largest cleanup campaign was set by India's Vadodara Municipal Corporation with only 5,000 people. So needless to say, the Bangladeshis, they majorly surpassed that old record. Now, number eight brings us the longest marathon swimming. Bangladesh is a land of rivers, whole lot of water there. And as a matter of fact, back in the day, people used to joke about that kids would learn to swim before they learned to walk. Either way though, of course, Bangladeshi set this record, you know, it was set by a 67 year old man. His name was Kitindra Chandra Boishya, and he was able to break a world record for the longest marathon swimming. He swam a total of 186 kilometers for 61 hours non-stop to break the previously set record at 177 kilometers. Number seven brings us the youngest five wicket taker in test debut. Now the people of Bangladesh, they're very passionate about the sport of cricket and Naeem Hassan made history in the year 2018 by taking five wickets against West Indies in his test cricket debut. And the 17 year old at the time broke the previous record set by an Australian named Pat Cummins. And this is definitely a world record that Bangladeshi cricket fans should be proud of. Although the match didn't go in Bangladesh's favor, it definitely did highlight the potential for rising new cricket players. Now we look at the record at number six, the largest human image of a hand. Now the company Lifeboy Bangladesh decided to promote hygiene in a very unique and interesting way on a day known as Global Hand Washing Day back in the year 2017. And because of that, it set a world record. 11,157 students gathered on the Dhaka Residential Model College field to form the world's largest human image of a hand. All of the students, they wore Lifebuoy branded gear, red t-shirts and the hats, 
all to form this image of a hand. The record halfway in at number five is Bangladesh is the world's thinnest nation. Yep, you heard that right. It's the thinnest nation in terms of BMI which stands for, of course, body mass index. Body mass index or BMI is a measurement of someone's weight in regards to their height. It is an indicator of the person's total body fat. So when in 2010, the national BMI average of Bangladeshi people was measured at 20.5 for women and 20.4 for men, that alone set a new world record and made the country the thinnest nation on the planet. This is one of the only few world records that wasn't intentionally set. Like nobody went out to say, well, let's be the thinnest nation on the planet. No, no, it didn't happen like that. Number four is the longest human chain. This is an incredible record. Bangladesh is one of the most populated countries in the world. And back in the year 2004, one of Bangladesh's world records was set when over 5 million people joined their hands together. They formed the longest human chain in the entire world. And it stretched from Teknaf to Tentulia, the 1,050 kilometer long human chain stretch across the entire country from one end of Bangladesh to the other end. Even after so many years have passed, it's still one of the most surprising events that has ever happened in the world. All right, guys, so next up, these next three world records are set by one single person. So let's introduce this amazing guy. His name is Mahmoudul Hassan. Faisal. He has a record for the most football arm rolls in 30 seconds. At the age of 18 years old, Mahmoudul Hassan Faisal from Magura, Bangladesh, he set his fifth world record. Yeah, he has five of them. That's a lot for one person. Either way, he set his fifth one and this record was for the most football arm rolls in 30 seconds by spinning a ball with his left hand 62 times within a 30 second time period. Now, the World record at number two is from the same guy, but this is for the most football arm rolls in one minute. Guinness World Record officials recognize his first world record, the most football arm rolls in one minute, back in August of 2018, and he did this 134 times. Now, the number one, we end this episode off with catching a basketball with your neck. Yeah, he has this world record. He broke the previous record of catching a basketball with your neck 27 times in a minute by doing it 34 times in a minute on May 3rd, 2019. He's definitely expressed that he's had a major interest in sports all of his life. And he said in his own words, and I quote, my dream is to appear before everyone with 25 such certificates. So he definitely plans to continue to make the people of Bangladesh proud. And he has his eye on acquiring more Guinness World Record certificates because he wants to go out and break more records. So the first thing that Bangladesh is famous for is being a home to Cox's Bazaar, which is actually the longest sea beach in the world. Whoa, yeah, yeah, I've heard about this place before, but like, how long is it really? Um, it measures about 120 kilometers in length, actually. Yeah, it's very long. Yeah. So the beach actually gets a decent amount of visits from tourists from time to time. Cox's Bazaar is also known by the name Panawa. Okay, Panawa. Uh, I, I Panawa want to know <laughs> what that means. Panawa? Cox's Bazaar? What's the similarity there? So it actually translates to yellow flower. You should know this. You talk about Bangladesh all the time. Yeah, I know I should, shouldn't I? <laughs> okay. So, speaking of large bodies of water, Bangladesh is actually also known for hosting the world's largest bay. The Bay of Bengal, which is located in the northeastern part of the Indian Ocean, is the largest bay in the world. It encompasses approximately 839,000 square miles and is bordered by India and Bangladesh. It's also home to millions of people with unique cultures that have been influenced by the wetlands. Now one thing to know about Bangladesh is that the waters aren't the only huge thing that this country is known for. Bangladesh actually has been recognized for being one of the most densely populated countries in the entire world. With almost 170 million Bengali people, it can be a very crowded place at times. Like for example, the capital city of Dhaka. Oh my God. The current population actually sits at over 20 million people. So a whole lot of people in one city. Now for this next one, I'm sure all of you sports fans are gonna know this and just people in general. Like Bangladesh is known for its cricket. Crickets? Yeah. 
Like, like the insects? What are you cricket? talking about? No, 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 not, not, not like crickets, like the actual spark cricket, you know, like the bat, the wickets, the bowler. Oh, yes, cricket, yes. Yeah, 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 that's, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. So, Bangladesh cricket team, they made the World Cup in the year 1999, and they were granted a test status in the year 2000. Oh, I knew that, yeah, I was just about to tell them that. I know you were, Yeah. I know. <laughs> Bangladesh actually has another record to its nature, the largest mangrove forest in the world. The Sandarbans National Forest is actually located in the middle of the river delta of the Ganges. During a multi-day trip on a hotel boat, you can actually discover the mysterious forest, and if you're lucky enough, you might just catch a glimpse of the famous Bengali tiger. So like I mentioned, Bangladesh is home to the Cox's Bazaar, which actually has good waves all year round, and there's actually an active group of surfers in the area. Although the surf scene in Bangladesh is still a little young, it's definitely something that Bangladesh is recognized for. And also with so many residents on such a small piece of land, you can imagine that it can be very busy, especially in their capital city of Dhaka. So you'll notice that there's a lot of traffic that comes into the city and actually it's pretty known for its traffic to be honest. And one thing that's super crazy is that sometimes traffic, well pretty much most days, traffic stops up to seven hours a day, like just literally not moving bumper to bumper that would be annoying. But hey, that's just something that you really got to embrace when you go to Bangladesh. Now, these objects right here, these are the bicycle rickshaws. They're still the most important means of transport in Bangladesh. The metal carriages are not only a convenient way to move around, but they also brighten up the busy cities. With thousands of competing rickshaws, you have to make sure that you stand out, right? And so the drivers have their carts decorated with the most beautiful pictures, and on the metal back plates, you can get a glimpse of rural scenes, Bollywood stars, birds, flowers, and elephants, all sorts of things. And sometimes images may contain political messages or painted advertisements. In any case, it gives you something to look forward to when you're stuck in traffic for hours. So, Leroy, do you know how they say like an apple a day keeps the doctor away? Yep, yep. Well, in Bangladesh, it's actually a guava day keeps the doctor away. Oh, yeah. The southern region of Bangladesh is actually known for its guava production. Yeah, that's that's very true. And also what I found out when I was, you know, researching this episode is that guavas are like actually known as the apples to the people of Bangladesh. Yeah. And like they have the floating market that sells mostly guavas and Bangladesh is is the eighth largest guava producer worldwide with an annual production of about 45,000 tons. That's a lot of guava. Yes, I know. <laughs> we know where we're going for some good guava. Yes. <laughs> so the last fact for this episode, which is actually something that a lot of people find very surprising, is that Bangladesh is actually known to have one of the longest female-led governments. So Sheikh Hasina has been the prime minister since 2009 and she was in office for three consecutive terms. And Hasina was known not the first female president of Bangladesh. Khalida Zaya was president between 1991 and 1996. Since independence in 1971, Bangladesh has been led by female leaders for 25 years.